So I was getting ready for work the other day and it struck me. I hadn't been outside for five days, not even to check the mail. And I hadn't even noticed. Life during a pandemic, these are surreal times, deadly for some. But your COVID experience could be completely different from mine. In some places, physical distancing isn't an option. How do you quarantine if you live in overcrowded housing? And hand washing, simple, right? But what if you don't have access to sanitation? This much is true. The pandemic has exposed something that was already there. What COVID is, is doing is laying bare inequalities and vulnerabilities which are quite deeply rooted and actually really challenges us to take inequalities seriously and much more seriously into the future. But are we ready to be challenged? I mean, if not now, when? Just think about what's happening right now. The health impact is clear. As I record this video, we now have more than 17 million cases of COVID around the world. Among those hardest hit are our most vulnerable, our essential workers who weren't given the option to work from home, and those with underlying health conditions like heart disease. So let's be clear, society was already sick, but COVID amplified it big time. And now consider the economic and social impacts. The International Labour Organisation estimates that half of working people could lose their jobs within the next few months. Half. In India alone, more than 400 million people risk sliding into poverty. It is mind-blowing just how much in it's cost in human lives, um, physical and mental, how much it's cost in terms of the economy, how much it's cost in terms of uh, children and development with schools closed. I mean, that is what's daunting to me. We, what is daunting is our current reality. What is less daunting is think is, is investing now at a fraction of what the current cost is now to prevent us from having to do this again. So you've just heard from two women I find truly inspiring. The first is Melissa Leach, a social anthropologist proficient in four African languages. She was the lead social scientist in the World Health Organization response to the West African Ebola outbreak. And this is Tolula Oni, an urban epidemiologist at Cambridge, a fellow of the African Academy of Sciences and a Next Einstein Forum fellow. I caught up with them because I figured they'd be thinking about the type of things we should all be thinking about right now. What sort of society do we want? I mean, surely we can't just carry on as if nothing's happened. I think dealing with a health emergency reminds us about the things that are important to prepare and respond to emergencies of all kinds. We're moving into a world which is going to be more disrupted and where resilience, I think, will be a key watchword. How do we build resilience? What needs to change? Tolu Onu studies public health in our cities. Her assessment is pretty grim. We have lost our way in thinking about the purpose of cities and we need urban systems, we need a different rethinking of urban governance that actually supports health and well-being. So yes, let's do urban, but but better. She doesn't think the healthcare system should carry the burden. Instead, we should be doing more to minimise our chances of becoming sick in the first place. Tolu wants a global action plan for public health. It would include prioritising infrastructure that makes physical activity easier for all of us. For the vast majority of people, um, ensuring equitable access to healthy environments and health care is a political decision and comes from public policy. Ah yes, the politics of it. Melissa Leach reckons many of us are up for wholesale changes. We want a better world. She's seeing it in action. But it's particularly at the local level where I think we've seen all kinds of community-based action, whether it's neighbourhood groups making sure the vulnerable in their communities are fed, delivering food parcels, people looking out for each other. But what about on a broader level? the reimagining of tomorrow. Tolo thinks Africa could lead the way here. They have a high number of young people. Um, we know this is vital for any kind of transformative process. And there are many actors involved in the process of shaping and developing these new and, and growing cities. The starting point is a proper global conversation. So what needs to change? What do you want to see? A sense of appreciation of inequalities, perhaps a future where 
inequality as it should be is back to the center stage of how our societies um, think and act and make policy and, and think about politics. I think that would be a, a positive thing. Talk to your families, talk to your neighbors, talk to your leaders and talk to us. Start right now by sharing your thoughts in the comments section below. We're here as custodians of this planet and custodians of each other. Uh, that's, that's the point, right? Remember to hit subscribe for our regular videos. And while you're here, check out our past episodes.